Unreal Blueprints, Custom Events. Let's review what we know so far. We know that all actors have an event graph. We know when we create a blueprint, a subclass of an existing actor, we can listen for various events using the event graph. So we can listen to and respond to these events. We also know because blueprints is a visual scripting language that all events are in red. And that, we, and that they have the event arrow icon next to them. Again, it's visual scripting language. And we can react to different events. And we've seen examples of on hit, on overlap, and various things like that, corresponding to event and then the name of the event. So on hit, on overlap, things like that. We can also define our own events. These are called custom events. And they allow us for defining events inside of a blueprint. So when things happen, do this. What is unique about custom events, and the reason why they are particularly important within Blueprints, is because of what's noted in the second point there. We can exchange data between different points in a graph without the nodes being connected by a wire. So what this means is, we can potentially create different things that receive data within a very complex graph, potentially, without them being directly connected. The events within the graph will transfer the information. So as we will see when we jump to Unreal, we can define a custom event, then call that custom event and pass the data within the same graph. In fact, we can also define parameters and arguments for these custom events within the same graph as well. So we define the custom event, then we can define what data we want to receive from the event when it happens, and then we can call the event and pass that data. So let's jump over to Unreal to kind of see all of these concepts in action. So over in Unreal, I have the basic template with nothing going on. I've added a box actor. I literally dragged and dropped right here, and I created a blueprint from it. So what I want to happen is when I press the M key, I want to print a message to the screen. Now, there is a couple of different ways to go about doing this. The first of which is I want this for the cube. So let's edit blueprint for cube and I'll go ahead and open this up. I've got it already selected here. And one potential way to do this would be to enable its input, listen for the M key event, and then do something as a result of that. But let's say there was a whole bunch of things going on. Let's say there were multiple events, multiple nodes, and then a fairly complex functionality to find. There might be situations where I want to pass data or directly enact something on the other side of a graph, like if there was a whole bunch of nodes right here. So let's kind of think that through. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I want this to react to input, is to go ahead and enable input. Right here. Okay. And it's going to need to know, hey, where are you getting this input from? So we will drag off player controller, get player controller. Okay, so this is pretty standard to give an actor that would normalize, normally have input to have input. So we've enabled input when event begin play happens. Okay, so this allows us to react to various inputs, such as, again, pressing the M key or various other things. So let's go ahead and put that in. So now I'm looking for keyboard and M. And there it is right there. So when this is pressed, I want to do something. And so let's print a string to the screen and say hi. Okay, so pretty simple, right? And we've kind of seen this so in, in other examples where we can literally get the player controller, enable input, press a button, do a thing. But we want to define a custom event. So I want to an event that's going to call a custom event that's going to do something else in a disconnected part of this graph. So right now, this is all connected from an execution pen to an execution pen using a wire. What I instead want to happen is I want something to happen and then another side of a graph, something else to happen. So we do that using custom events. So, okay. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this. So I'm going to break all these pins and move this away. We're going to come back to this, but I don't want it quite there. 
So let's pull off this execution pen. I still want to press M, but what I want is to set up a custom event. So let's go ahead and separate this right here. So add custom event, boom, okay. So I got a little bit confused there because I didn't remember that Unreal kind of does this in reverse, or at least the, the reverse of some ways approaching this problem and the way I was approaching it, which is, to which is to say we needed to find the event and then we define the thing that calls the event. So let's kind of think this through. So I define a custom event that's literally called a custom event zero, but I'm gonna change this. Let's say, this is now called press M. And I'll, right here, press M. Okay, cool. So when this event happens, what I want to happen is for print string to happen. And you may be thinking, well, that's weird. You've defined the endpoint, but how do I get to the starting point? Well, this is what I mentioned about, and we're kind of doing things in reverse, or at least the reverse pattern that we may think of them. We define the endpoint first, what will happen when this event happens, and then we call it. So, I have press M, which is my custom event, and this says custom event underneath there. And when this happens, it will do print string. So cool. So how do I use this? Well, I need to call that custom event. Now that it exists within this graph, it, it, it can now be called or triggered if you prefer. So I want to off this press M, call, and then notice, oh, hey, do you mean to call a function? I do. What function is this? Press M, boom. So what we've created is kind of a roundabout way of doing this. We have this getting input right here. When I press M on the keyboard, it will then call this event. Disconnected on the other side of a graph, this will happen. These will directly trigger each other, and then this will happen. So I've created an indirect connection using a custom event. I've defined an endpoint here, and to find what triggers it over here. So this will go into this, which will immediately go into this, which will go into this. But let's kind of see that in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and save. I'm gonna go ahead and click play, give it focus, and press M, and we see hi. And I'm gonna go ahead and escape. So what happened was, we defined again a custom event. We defined the end point, and then we call it the starting point, call that event. And then we can trigger something unconnected by wires within the same graph. So this event happens, and then this ending point happens. So let's go back to the blueprint one more time before I end this video. So we saw right here that we created this first as a custom event. We can give it a name if we want. And then over here, I called that custom event using a function right here. So this connected to this did this. And the advantage of all of this, as I noted, is that we might have situations where we want to pass data in a graph like this, but I didn't connect these. So that will allow us to more quickly pass data. We define custom events within the own graph, and within that graph can pass data between things. Now I emphasized pass data, but I didn't actually use it in this example. If we wanted to, we could add various parameters, and when we called right here, we could accept information, send it as output, which would then show up down here in the event. So particularly useful in complex situations where we want to pass data between different things. In fact, let me just do that real quick. So let's set up an input right here. And instead of a Boolean, let's call this a string. And I'll call this string to show. Okay. Now notice as soon as I added this right here, it immediately added it to down here and then immediately added it to there. So these are all connected to each other. So let's connect string to show to string right here. And let's change this value to, hey. So now when I press the M key, it calls this right here, transferring this here to this, transferring to this. So notice these are not connected. These are on the other side of the graph and we are passing data using a custom event across a graph. I'm gonna compile, save, and play, give it focus, press M, and we see, hey. 
So notice we could do that with potentially any data we wanted to. We could pass it directly among things within a graph without them being directly connected by wires. This is a powerful functionality in blueprints and very commonly used to do many different things that we want to communicate between nodes within a graph. And we might not particularly always want to drag the execution wire between things. So for example, this is sort of with its own little branch and this is its own little stuff down here. So within this, potentially, again, this event triggers this event triggers this event. And we might want to pass data between them and get data and do various other things. And custom events allows us to do all of that. We can define a custom event right here. And then we define the function that calls it. We then call that custom event. And we can pass data between them. Incredibly useful functionality within Blueprints in Unreal.